Hello, so this is going to be a video on what type of material is used in gas mask or respirator lenses. Now, I'm going to start off the, uh, the video by basically saying half-face respirators don't have lenses, because whenever I do a video like this, you always get somebody who goes, oh, you forgot this, or oh, you forgot that, when it's not even relevant to the video. So, half-face respirators don't have lenses on because they only go up to your nose like that. So, no lenses on those because I know somebody is going to for a, you know, without a doubt, otherwise, hey, you forgot that. Also, I'm only going to cover some of the key materials. There's lots of different variations of plastic, so I don't want to go over every kind of plastic that's used. Um, so, obviously, just bear that in mind that, again, I'm sure I'll get somebody to go, oh, you forgot this kind of plastic. Well, sorry, I'm not going to research every different type of plastic that's ever been conceived to be used in respirator lenses. So, let's start off with glass. Obviously, this dates back quite a long time. Glass was for a lot used for a quite a long time, especially World War One, World War Two respirators, simply because people knew how to make glass properly. By, uh, properly by this point, glass is fairly strong to a degree, as long as you don't get an impact directly on the glass. But if you cut the glass quite thick, it's actually fairly sturdy. I've seen videos. I think Tumbo did one where people have actually shot these, and you'd be surprised how well they hold up, especially compared to lighter plastic lenses. Um, obviously glass has been phased out for the reason that you can make plastics now lighter and cheaper that don't shatter but you'd be surprised at how good glass was so obviously most World War 1 World War 2 masks use glass lenses some World War 2 masks use celluloid and stuff like that but you know that was like early plastics again and I'm sure somebody will tell me that actually celluloid is not a plastic because again it might not be um, but you know you know what I mean, early-ish plastics, but for the most part, glass, World War One, World War Two masks tend to always be glass lenses, unless they use some sort of celluloid or sort of other thing. Now, when I come up to um, silicon later, there's going to be some tie-ins with celluloid, so, but for the most part, World War One, World War Two masks are glass. Some Cold War masks are glass as well, GP5s have glass lenses, lots of Soviet masks had glass lenses until they use plastic. But... For the most part, glass makes sense because, as said, there was lots of it around, they knew how to make it at that point. So it was very easy to put into respirators and it does its job. The nice thing of glass is it tends to not scratch. Now, you can probably see that the, this mask needs a wipe on the inside and the outside of the lenses to make it clearer. But thick cut glass tends to not scratch, obviously. Now, compared to a plastic like acrylic, if you, ever, you, know, if you know much about acrylic, I've got Soviet acrylic on the Vostok watch. Um, you tend to get gouges and sort of marks on acrylic. Now, acrylic is one of those plastics where you can, you know, kind of clean it up, and if it's light scratches, you can buff them out, especially if you use an acrylic cleaner. But for the most part, glass tends to not scratch as badly as acrylic. So, you know, glass is good. There's nothing really wrong with glass, but we've just got better stuff than it now. So, this is, now this is where you get onto probably acrylics and other types of plastics. So... As you can see here, that's got a lot more scratches and marks on it. Um, a lot of these wouldn't buff out. The reason being that, as I said, um, acrylics tend to scratch easier. But again, unless it's a really deep scratch, you can buff them out. So lots of colder masks use acrylic for the simple reason that it's fairly sturdy. It doesn't break too easily. Um, as I said, it scratches, but you can buff out those scratches, and it was cheaper. I think as well you can do more interesting things where you kind of like bend the acrylic, because if you look at this, it's not totally flat, the lens. Um, so you could do interesting stuff like that with acrylic, whereas with a lot of glass lenses, as far as I'm aware, you couldn't really um, kind of mould the glass into interesting shapes. So I'm pretty sure my VistaVision, which I did a video on, is acrylic, because, um, you know, that's the kind of thing. Now, again, there's lots of other kinds of plastic other than acrylic um, and polycarbonate and things like that. Uh, so, as said, don't have a go at me in the comments because I didn't mention your favourite kind of plastic that might have been used on respirators. I imagine PVC's been used, clear PVC and a few other things. As said, lots of them have similar qualities, so there's no point arguing over what's better, acrylic or whatever else, because that's not what this video is about. However... You also notice there's a thing with thickness, as I was sort of saying with the glass lenses, where I find that even if it's a weaker type of plastic, if it's cut thicker, it's probably going to be stronger than a very thin bit of strong plastic. So that's something to bear in mind. Obviously, the advantage of a better plastic means that if it was cut to the same thickness, it'd be even stronger. But bear in mind, not all, not every, you know, every mask is kind of equal in terms of how strong the plastics are, because 
it depends on the shape of the plastic, how thick it's cut and things like that. But again, acrylic is used on lots of masks for good reason. It's not that strong, but it's strong enough. Again, like I've said to people, these masks were not made with the intention of airsoft or paintballing. Um, because obviously they would not stop a bullet, so they weren't. They were made to kind of survive wear and tear, maybe you dropping the mask and things like that. Not shooting the mask with stuff, you know, like airsoft guns, air rifles, paintball guns. Uh, that's why I keep saying to people, if you're using a mask for airsoft, make sure you've reinforced the lenses or use one that has very strong lenses. Don't just get a generic respirator because they were never made with that in mind. Okay, silicon. So this is actually a rubber. So you can see here it's a bo uh, sort of soft bendy rubber. And silicon is sort of what I'm going to compare to celluloid, because both of them discolour. Now this Polish MP5B hasn't really discoloured all that much. I think it's got an ever so slightly orange tint to it, which probably won't even come across on the camera. But um, this is actually in fairly good condition for silicon. Now, if you look up the MCU2P, my one is an example of this, but pretty much every one you can find on Google Images, you'll see that they're all different shades of orange. The reason being that silicon discolours. Now, silicon is also not good for respirators for the other reason that it's very easy for chemicals to eat through it. So, silicon is vulnerable to blister agents, things like that, acidic gases as far as I'm aware. So, uh, I had somebody complaining at me the other week who was obviously a bit ignorant to facts because he was saying the M40 was the best gas mask ever made, why did the US Army replace it? And I said, well, they had requirements that they needed and it was also made out of silicon, which wasn't great because they had to make the second skin for it. So, you know, I'm not saying the M40 is a bad mask, it's actually quite a good mask, but one of the flaws of it was the entire construction was silicon for all of the rubber around the mask. So. That's why it got replaced, for, you know, and the US Army had modern requirements they wanted in a mask that the M40 didn't meet. And he goes, oh yeah, you're the guy that likes CS10, so your opinion's worth nothing. I'm sorry, the S10's a good mask, so fuck off. Anyway, um, back to the subject of this. Silicon is not great in respirators, in my opinion. It should, it's probably fine on, like, 3M half face masks. But for military masks, it's great in terms of it lowers the weight of the mask. You can make the silicon see-through. It's bendy and flexible, so it's unlikely to tear. The problem with silicon, as said, is chemicals eat through it, and a respirator is designed to protect you from chemical weapons. So when you have a mask that's eaten away by chemical weapons fairly quickly, that's not a good material to use on it. So, just covering those points again, silicon is good in terms of it's bendy and flexible. It's actually a really lightweight rubber that's see-through, so that's cool. But, you know, the issue is chemical weapons eat into it really efficiently, so it's not good for protection from chemical weapons, and it's being used on the gas mask. And the issue is obviously, that like I said, as, so it discolours, so if you have a visor made from silicon, over time that's going to go orange or another colour, like the old celluloid lenses did on masks. So, um, you know, that's a bit of a problem, because it means you're not going to be able to see clearly through it when it discolours and goes foggy and everything else, because it's a rubber of a short life. So. Silicon, again, it's not really a plastic or a glass type thing, it's a rubber, but it's, you know, not brilliant for that reason. Okay, so what do most modern masks use? Polycarbonate. So what's polycarbonate? It's the stuff riot shields are made out of. It's kind of like acrylic, but much stronger. So polycarbonate doesn't need to be cut particularly thick to be strong. People keep asking me how thick my riot shield is. I think at most it's a centimetre thick. So that gives you an idea, if a riot shield can survive being hit with axes and bats and crowbars and bricks and things like that, and it's only about a centimetre thick of polycarbonate, obviously polycarbonate lenses in a mask work very well. So polycarbonate, again, it doesn't scratch all that easily, it's a strong plastic, um, as you can see on there. It's not that scratched, it's quite an easy plastic to see through, it doesn't really distort your vision or anything like that, and it's strong. Now again, I still wouldn't really recommend you use a mask even if it has polycarbonate lenses for airsoft because, you know, there's too many factors where things could break. As I said, these masks are not designed for airsoft, but they're getting better at it over time. So obviously this is an FM12, not an S10, because people confuse this mask for an S10 in a lot of my videos, whereas as far as I'm aware, the S10 is a PVC or very thin acrylic lens. The lenses on the S10 are far more vulnerable than on the FM12. That was kind of one of the big changes they made. So, yeah. Polycarbonate is good just simply for the fact it's a very strong clear plastic, um, so that's kind of why it's used now. Now I'm sure in the future somebody will come up with another kind of plastic or whatever else that's even stronger still, harder to break, you know, and that will be used instead. But at the moment polycarbonate, as far as I'm aware, is the strongest kind of plastic you can use on a mask. There might even be weird like semi-polycarbonates, you know, other hybrids of plastics that are even better that might already be coming into use, I don't know. 
And as I said, when you get a mask, it doesn't have like a list saying this lens is made out of glass or this lens is made out of polycarbonate. So on some of them, I might be wrong about what some of them are made of because you kind of have to read online and take an educated guess as well. But as I said, at the moment, polycarbonate is the best. It's just kind of the successor to acrylic in a lot of ways, I think. I don't think any masks still use glass as the respirators, uh, lenses. Maybe some do, but not many. I mean, most nations would not think of using glass now because you can just use stuff that's cheaper and stronger. And silicon lenses are definitely used on one or not two masks still, but not on many. I think everybody did realise why silicon's not a great thing to use, simply because of the reason that it discolours and chemicals can eat through it. So there you go, hopefully this um, explains again some of the types of things you would use in a respirator's lenses. But again, don't start complaining that, oh I didn't mention this one type of thing that was used on one respirator somewhere, who oh, you forgot it, I know more than you. Because uh, that's just silly. But there you go.